Hello and welcome to this video which is going to introduce you to the Grasshopper plugin for Rhino 3D and the Geometry Gym add-on which is uh, and how it can generate space gas structural analysis data from within this environment. I'm going to start with uh, just native Grasshopper and basically it's a series of calculation components which have a series of uh, inputs on the left hand side and then calculate a numeric uh, uh, result on the right hand side so it can have multiple outputs. So I'm going to start just by creating a circle in Grasshopper and then I'm going to use a number slider where I can change the numeric value to determine the radius as an input for that circle. Next thing, I'm, let's assume we actually want to create a series of steel beams which span from the origin out to the uh, perimeter on the curve. Then I can actually create a, a line component which takes a start point and an end point. The start point we can set equal to zero or the origin and then the end point we could actually divide the curve into a number of uh, two uh, equidistant points so if I type in divide okay I can wire this curve the circle in as a curve the default input for the number of segments is 10 but again we could actually create a slider or we could actually use not, um, inputs from spreadsheets text files and bits and pieces and then use that to change the, the number of perimeter points and then those points could be wired in as the end point. And you can see then the, the process is captured in the model and it's updating uh, as we make changes to the inputs. Okay, this is native Grasshopper, and then if you install the Geometry Gym add ons, particularly Bullant and the Space Gas plugin, then we have means to start to build or populate this model also with structural analysis attributes and relationships. So I'm going to first of all create a material to apply to the uh, to these this analytical beams that we create okay by default this values um, input for mechanical attributes of a steel material and then the next input that we'll need basically is one to create a profile property to assign to the beams that we create so I'm going to say create section property one of the inputs it needs is a material then the other that it needs is a profile description so let's call up an Australian UB section, so 180 UB 16.1. Now these are values that you'll have used in natively in the space gas environment. And a catalog, which might be Australian 300. And then you can also generate section property marks and bits and pieces as well. Okay. So by now we actually have an output which is a structural analysis property. Note that the text, that uh, the real-time response that Grasshopper gives is giving in the space gas text file format. So the last thing we need to do then basically is create a series of beams that span or have the path along the lines that we're generating. So we can say we want to create a beam and the inputs it wants is a property input and then a line to represent the the uh, axes of the element. Now by default I'm just going to set an orientation number of 90 so that I get my webs vertical on the uh, Z direction. Again it's parametric so if we actually go back and change the circle radius or the number of elements the calculated model will update. Okay we can also generate other structural analysis attributes for example we might want to generate node restraints to be on particular nodes in this model. So I can one set a node restraint. I can add a boolean toggle to set to true the restraints in the X, Y, Z directions as a pin. Wire that into the node restraints and then the points we might just restrain it on these points on the perimeter. So this will create a, uh, a, a, a pin restraint in the space gas model at each of these locations. It's also possible to set up load cases it's also actually possible to execute the solver um, and interrogate results directly from from uh, within Grasshopper. But so let's set up a, a load case. Okay, and then here I'm just going to add a gravity loading to this load case. So I can pull down. You can see there's some other UDLs and, and load nodes and thermal loads that we could have but I'm just going to add a gravity which takes an input as a load case. 
Okay, so let's assume this has now prepared a structural analysis model that we would like to, to send to space gas. In Grasshopper there's a process called baking, which turns the objects from being virtual on the screen to native Rhino objects that you can select and manipulate. So in the Geometry Gym tools you'll also find some bake buttons. If I double click in here, it will prompt me to write out a text file for the model that I've created. And then if I go to Space Gas, I can File, Import, from Text, and pick that file. Okay, so if I change my viewpoint, and I can turn on various attributes including restraints, then you can see, or we can go to the rendered view. Okay, and we can set it to rendered or turn on various restraints and bits and pieces in this environment. Okay, now the beauty of Grasshopper is then that it has captured this whole modeling process. So if we come back and decide we want to change one of the inputs, for example, our base assumption that a circle was providing the equidistant points on this location, maybe it's an arbitrary shape, and I'm going to set some points for which I'll ask Rhino to interpolate a curve between. Okay, so I can call up to interpolate that curve and set it periodic or closed. Okay, and then I can rewire that curve in as the point where I want to actually add the elements and again still update or control the grasshopper calculation. So I hope that's a useful introduction to actually how the sort of components uh, work and how grasshopper works. I welcome any questions and suggestions. Certainly I'm working on actively on making various improvements to the plugin, so please don't hesitate to get in touch.